One of my favorite things in Yu-Gi-Oh! is to experiment with brand new cards. Getting a chance to fully unlock the potential of something that's brand new is invigorating, and you get to be creative and imaginative. However, with most cards, they're released first in the OCG in Japan, so when they get imported over to here eventually, we're dealing with something that's already solved and that doesn't leave much room for innovation. However, four times a year in each core set, a small handful of TCG exclusive cards are released. And as of lately, it's been two themes per year that are completely exclusive to the TCG first, with it being released in one set and then a second wave of support to follow it up. However, Kami's kind of garnered the reputation as of recently that while the first wave of support may be interesting and enticing for new players, the second wave can sometimes look almost unrelated to the first wave. I'm looking at you, Tastina, as being the worst defender of this. And while I do think they improved this trend with Ashen getting a okay second wave of support, it still wasn't enough to even make really Rogue viable. So when the Mimigools came out in Infinite Forbidden, with an exciting first wave, cool artwork, and very interesting lore as well with gameplay mechanics, everyone got excited, but also a bit pessimistic, and for good reasons. But now with Rage of the Abyss out, we have seen all the new Mimigul cards. We don't know if there's going to be any more support from this point, but what I can say with this second wave, it actually far exceeds what I expected. Now the second wave isn't perfect, but in it we've gotten a more rigid and defined win condition, some extenders, as well as some utility cards that may or may not be worth playing, depending on how you want to build the deck. And the overall effect on the strategy is that it does get significantly stronger and moves closer towards meta playable. But isn't going to be meta playable enough that I can take this to a tournament and feel like I'll be successful? Well, today I'm going to be taking on Mimigul's to locals. I'm going to build a deck with the brand new cards, and then I'm going to head there and see how well I fare. I figure now is the best time to do it, as we are less than a week away from Halloween. And we got our ghouls to mess around with. And before I show you guys what the Mimigul cards do, please make sure to like, subscribe, as well as leave a comment down below if you enjoy these locals vlogs. And let me know what types of decks you want me to see going on in the future. I already have several weeks of content lined up with dueling vlogs, where you can see firsthand me playing at locals, see my thought process explained out to you guys, as well as get a crew deck list for my first time playing some of these decks. So if you have any suggestions for what decks to bring after I've run out of my own ideas, then I'm all for it. As well as if there's any changes you'd like to the formula of the video, I'm always wanting to improve the content for you guys. The suggestions are welcome. But with that said, let's talk about the new Mimigols. So with Rage of the Abyss, Mimigul got a suite of seven new cards, which is a lot. And they vary in usefulness, but let me go over what the cards I'm using from the new set are. So in my opinion, the most important cards from the new set are going to be the XYZs. In fact, there's two of them. But because they give this deck a lot more robust of a win condition and game plan, allowing you to rely less on supplementary engines or generic and board pieces and come into their own as an entire design. The first of which is Mimigul Throne, a rank one requiring two level one Mimigul monsters. You can detach material from it, special summon one Mimigul master from your hand's deck or graveyard. And during the main phase and quick effect, target a Mimigul master you control, and then you can equip this card to it as an equip spell and gives it a thousand attack. Then you could turn a card from the field to the hand equal to the number of materials this card had. So usually it'll be one because you detached one to summon the master. This card is excellent because obviously it gets you another monster from the deck, special from the deck or grave or hand. Fantastic ability that any deck would love to have. And Mimical Master obviously is an above average card in its own right, being Stratos plus more. Then Throne could then turn into Disruption, even though you can't use both in the same turn. So in my eyes, this is the single best new Mimigul card because I'm gonna wanna summon this every game as it keeps my engine going, as well as continues to put up disruptions in a very card economically efficient manner. But the XYZs don't end there as we got a second rank one, Giant Mimigul. This one is generic rank one requiring two monsters and says your non-XYZ Mimigul monsters can attack directly while your opponent controls a face down monster. That's not why you use this though, it's the next effect. And that is, if it's Exceed Summoned, you can add one Mimigul card from your deck to your hand. Now, this is really important because Mimigul Room is an incredible card, and it was really only searchable before off Mimigul Dragon. But if you wanted to use your dragon to get Maker, which is also an incredible card, then you lacked a way to search it. And now you can use Maker to set up your rank ones and then end the turn with giant Mimigul searching your room, you still had access to your powerful traps. Something that is incredibly important for the strategy, as well as meaning we don't have to run a full suite of Mimigul traps, even if that's something we may still want to do anyways. But that's not it, because its other ability is also 
very meaningful, even if it's not broken. And that is, you detach material from this card and target face-up cards on the field, up to the number of face-down monsters your opponent controls. Destroy them, and if you do, it inflict 1,000 damage for each card destroyed. So when you get into some stickier game states, this can act as a board wipe, or even if we're just giving them monsters, it can pop one or two cards to advance us to game state, or even lethal shots, right? Because sometimes 8,000 damage, you can be just shy, and Giant Mimigal can get you there. But remember, that's not all that Mimigal got. Now, I will say, I think the other cards in the new set aren't as good, but they still are worth running, or at least some of them are. So I'm only playing two of the other Mimigal cards from the set, and let me explain what they are. Now, first up is Mimigal Fairy. Just like the other Mimigal monsters, you can special summon it to your opponent's field. However, this one says that when you use this ability, if you instead have a Mimigal monster, you can choose to, rather than give it to your opponent, summon it to your field face up. Meaning you could then advance your XYZ plays or turn into Link Fodder because nothing in this deck is going to lock you into XYZs, even the new cards. Its flip effect stops your opponent from activating the effect of monsters that were special summoned from their hand. So this will stop, say, Diabell Star Black Witch, Kelma Cash Tira, Cash Tira Unicorn, Snake Eyes Poplar, a fair bit of cards, although not like an incredibly broken effect. And then obviously it will go into your control like all the other Mimigols. Now this card doesn't scream broken, but what it is is still just a level one extender. So if you get say impermed on Mimigol Dragon, you have a searchable target that can summon itself and then turn into Throne or Giant Mimigol. And thus Mimigol Fairy is a completely worthwhile addition to the deck. Now the other Mimigol I play is used more for its flip effects and that is Mimigol Slime. What's up my slime? <laughs> Oh god, I can't believe I said that. Anyways, this one's flip effect is as follows. When it's flipped up, your opponent, which will be you, special summons one Mimigol monster from their deck to their field. Yep, that's simple. That's that's pretty good, right? I mean, I don't, I don't have to explain why that's good. I hope. Uh, and then it goes to your control like all the others. And this one in the hand can, of course, go to your opponent's field. However, if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can summon it to your field instead. So it's, it's like this um, Pankratops ability, which... Cool, that's, that's fine. Uh, and you definitely can use this as an extender as well if you're out of fairies or if you've already used fairy. Between these two, you'll have more names to access in your deck that can give you a fair bit of extension. And now you won't need to just summon monster opponent's field and flip them up to get them back to you. Now, if you lack a way to flip up their cards, you can just search slime or fairy and use those to put bodies on the fields. Now, while this deck will still want to use the ability of giving your opponent's monsters and flipping them up, you're not incredibly reliant on them anymore, and you can play games where you never need to trigger their flip effects. Now, the other three cards in this archetype that got released are Mimigal Armor, Mimigal Fork, and Mimigal Charm. Yes, Mimigal Charm is a QCR that I ate on livestream, which I guess you can watch here. Yep, and that's how much I love this deck. I ate the cards. A QCR, in fact. You become one with the Mimigals, because I am a Mimigal. But yeah, I don't feel like these cards are worthwhile running, because this deck will want to be played alongside a suite of maybe other engines or non-engines, and as a result, you want to be playing a lean Mimigul package and not playing anything you would deem unnecessary. But okay, so that is all the new Mimigul stuff. Now, if you want to see the deck list, I do have it in the comments below, but if you want to see an actual deck profile with me breaking down decisions and reasonings behind every single choice, then consider checking out my Patreon, where with each of these dual vlogs, I'll give you guys a more in-depth deck profile so you can get a better pick of my mind, as well as if you have questions, it is more likely that I can respond there. Now, with all that in mind, it's time to head to Locals. Now, one last thing before we get into the gameplay. If you see any misplays on my behalf or on my opponents, then feel free to point them out. However, make sure you do so in the right manner. Don't have a negative tone to beat someone down or make them feel bad. If you see a mistake, rather point out that, hey, this play was probably better, and then list out the reasons why. Be constructive, because building each other up is what we're looking to do here, and improve everyone's gameplay overall. Not trying to just tear anyone down or make them feel bad. As well, this is a locals, we're trying to have fun and be casual, so mistakes are bound to happen, even for myself. That said, let's, uh, let's get to dueling. All right, so round number one, and I lose the roll. So, a bit of a spoiler, I do not play hand traps in my main deck. So, losing the roll to you, Bell, is going to be tough, as now I'm going to have to deal with trying to play through this. And uh, I have to just sit here and watch. Now, as playing a board breaker deck, you can't just zone out and see what happens. While it may be ideal for the video's sake to fast forward if uh, my whole spiel here is uh, over and my opponent's still playing, it is important as the duelist to constantly be thinking, what's my game plan going to be in order to break the field? Now, at this point in hand, I'm trying to remember what I had. I know I had a Cosmic Cyclone, so um, immediately in my head, there's two things that can be used for. For one, it's either going to hit the sequence, the uh, Phoenix sequence, which will 
be equipped to Desiree. At that point, um, that will negate the Desiree negate because if I change the Desiree uh, on resolution when it checks for how many cards it equipped to it, it'll be zero. It'll negate nothing. Uh, or it can Nightmare Pain because that's a card they can use in the grind game to really win. Uh, although that'll be circumstantial. I'll have to see how well I can fare otherwise. Uh, and now, this deck doesn't always end on the same thing, but ideally, if they can go with their full field, it is going to be Desiree, Phantom, Caesar, Rage, as well as Varbadress, which is a lot to deal with. But it also requires our opponents to know how to do it properly, I mean, mistakes, as well as not be scared of any of our hand traps. So here are my opponents, is going through the plays, and I'm not sure whether they made a mistake or if this was the correct line. It ended on just Rage, Desiree, and Phantom Ubel, which is still pretty good. But, playing a breaker deck, I have to be expecting to play into these fields somewhat. So, time to see how I fare. So the effect goes through, and I grab a cashed here at Unicorn. Uh, so nothing on summon there. So now, what I'm looking for here is if I can get the Fenrir off the field, as well as trigger its effect. That would be the, the absolute best case scenario, because then I would be able to summon the Unicorn and go from there. Over him holding the uh, interaction on the Fenrir is uh, um, going to be a bit troublesome. I normal summon my Mimigal Master and I get to search here. Now, Mimigal Master is something I'm going to play one of. You don't really want to draw it. You'd rather special summon it from the deck. However, summoning here is not the end of the world. It's not a completely bad card. Here I get Fury, so I get a bit of extension. I can turn into Anima. Anima will force this Rage here now because it is pointed up. Uh, and if he just negates it and there's nothing else to it, then he'll be able to convert into SP pretty easily. So the Rage getting used here is important. This is going to be one of the biggest pieces of interaction. Here I lose the Master. And what they're able to do here uh, is because I had the extra body up, uh, I am no longer presenting the cash to a unicorn threat. So it is not the best. However, if I can end up clearing the field, it'll still be okay. So I have to think here, what is the best card to add? Uh, I can either get extension of the maker or I can get talents to steal a card. Um, however, looking at my hand, I have no extension left. So if I go talents and if I if they banish the anima as well as the monster I control, then talents just loses. So I have to go maker here instead. Now, obviously, I know that if they have Desiree in negate this, I will just... Uh, be able to negate so i don't actually care not negate but cosmic the back row so i get dragon and slime off the maker because i already have the archer fiend in hand and whenever i give them i will then try to flip up with my archer fiend however i did make a mistake i forgot that my opponents had a shavar in hand and shavar is important because the shavar can be used to pop my set mimical that i give them actually a pretty crappy interaction on, on uh, uh in this whole ordeal because it's kind of hard for me to deal with it but randomness gives them the slime so i get to keep the dragon i'm thinking here what i want to special summon and I decide that with them having the slime and they can just negate the Archfiend to flip up with Phantom anyways, I'd rather just get the dragon, get a room and try and play the grind game that way. Uh, and then I'm hoping here what's going to happen is they're not going to do anything. And then I get to follow up this with SP. SP will then trade a bunch of cards. They'll then SP my card off the field. And if all that actually happens, then I can summon Unicorn. So that's the kind of game plan that I am trying to rock here. Uh, as well as with that, I can go into Fiendsmith cards and really kind of get everything going. So SP is going to come down and really pressure out the UL cards here. Uh, SP is fantastic against UL because it really does hit a lot of different cards. Uh, and I think I want to SP here the Phantom because I want to force an interaction point so I can chain the SP to clear my field. He chains the Phantom and I'm going to go chain SP here targeting both SPs. And uh, it goes through. Now special summons from the deck off the Phantom. I just destroy then special. And now I know there's no publicly known interruptions left. Uh, now I should have known with the Shavara there that it's not completely done, but... Uh, yeah, and I still have to deal with all this follow-up as well. The Nightmare Pain, uh, the Fiendsmith cards, the, the Ubel cards. Uh, yeah, so I actually summon Unicorn here, hoping this goes somewhere far. And I met with a Shavara popping the set Mimigal Dragon. And that, that sucks. Uh, now I do get to rip his extra deck here. And he chains Yama, reviving the Rage. So now I get to look at what I want to banish. And I'm looking here, and I'm like, okay, let's, uh... Let's hit some of their follow-up here. They have no phantoms left, which is important for, for even game two and three. No one's only two phantoms here. I hit the anguish because I figured that's a good way of them cracking back and killing my field. And then I get hit with Escape of the Unchained to pop my Nightmare Unicorn. And I do have another Cashier of Field Spawn Hand, so I actually don't mind with this. Pops the Rage, pops the Unicorn, and then they get to add back a card from neck to hand. So they get back the uh, Phantom Ebal, so they're still going to be one their next turn. So I get to go Cash for Unicorn and attempt to search again, so I summon it. And the unknown backer is a call by the Graves. They get to banish the Unicorn on my Grave, and unfortunately, it is turned off. At this point here, all I really have left is the unusable Mimigal in my hand and then two cards that I can set. So, yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's the extent of my ability. I'm reading Mimigal Maker here. If I have the ability to flip up cards immediately, I know I don't. Uh, yeah, I have to go battle phase here. It's mandatory. I have to attack, which sucks. I set two cards face down. The end phase, RSP's return, and not looking good for me. However, 
it is a difficult game state and there still is a chance i can win because i have the ability to hit the resource game with unicorn uh mimigal room is a crazy card as well and i'm gonna try keep myself alive as much as possible my opponent starts off on almost something lurry this will get them back into fiends with access a little requiem here and they get special summon from the deck um now here i do make a mistake uh or a play that is i guess not illegal but uh i forget that i'm you i'm called out here for some reason in my head i'm like i got impermed on unicorn so i banish the phantom here we do catch this mistake in a second uh although it is a bit too late but it does change the game in in a, a potentially meaningful manner both of us probably would have made different plays if there was a phantom bell in the opponent's deck uh for example here i wouldn't be so quick to kind of banish the field and let him kind of um loses resources because i don't want to actually multiple u-bells on field because i have to use the cosmic cyclone on the uh sequence i then have to use the, the mimical room to book the u-bell monsters not take damage because i'm low on life points remember guys i crashed for for a shit ton of damage last turn so one nice thing with this position is that with the cashier field spell my attack points in new corner are actually higher than desiree so that's not bad uh anyways battle phase comes u bells attacking my monster to try and kill me so i have to try to put a face down or i'll just lose on the spot at uh, which point my opponent chains the the desiree and i chain cosmos cyclone to banish the sequence opponents then uses the sp here and wants to banish the desiree and the nightmare unicorn an attempt of clearing the field as well as uh making sure the sequence doesn't get banished they can use it for follow-up but with the cashier field spell up and with all of his big monsters gone i can now safely just book the ubel and get dragon for follow-up to my field and what that means is now my defense is too big for him to swing over me and with the sp gone i can pretty safely just live so now we go into main phase two and uh i will be getting another turn which is extremely important because now i feel like i have a chance of winning this the cash unicorn will return off the sp and it can get birth i won't be negated by the call of the grave anymore and i will be in a good spot uh, at this point i do realize that the phantom of you bell uh should be in his extra deck because i see both unicorns are banished and he gets it back so that means i will have to deal with phantom bell on top of whatever interruptions are going to be here so now i have to deal with phantom and sp they're still a lot better than what i was dealing with last turn so my opponent makes yama here and uh they have very little they can do left so i think with the yama they probably should have gone for add back rage that way they can make uh rage in the end field here and then rage would be another disruption but yeah now we get back to my turn and this you can see this board side looks really good i can pressure the field really well i have maker in hand uh, I can room bounce the dragon as well to resummon it to either player's fields. What I'm looking for here is I want to be able to nuke the field with dragon uh, and then just kill them. I have to think, what's the best way of getting through this? Uh, and I figure that the Fiends with cards will probably be my best bet at forcing some bit of interaction. On the Summon of Moon, my opponent decides this is where they want to pop. Uh, and I'm fine with this. This will clear up some board space. They're going to pop the Desiree uh, and that will let them pop my Moon. Uh, and then I can chain the SP to, to clear up space in the field from them. So give, give them the opening. Uh, now the alternative is that they chain the U-Bell, but because they have the U-Bell face down, there's no way for them to kind of uh, fill up all their spots. If they pop the U-Bell, they get incarnate, but that wouldn't help them to leave a spot in their field. Or if they pop the Spirit, then they have nothing to summon. So either way, it will be an open spot. I chain SP, uh, and my opponent thought I'd target the, the, the SP, but no, I targeted my Goddess. That way it's just a free banish. I don't need to clear my field at this point. I don't have cash cards left. I try to close me in one of theirs. And then they chain their SP to make sure my SP doesn't banish anything useful. Now all they have left is the Phantom Interrupt, and I'm feeling pretty good. Talents should deal with that pretty quickly talents take control and now i am ready to duel i have both birth and maker and i get to pop off i i do run low in mimical cards i don't play that many so this is a little risky but i mean not really uh you don't need that much grind here dragon and fairy still plenty because it will give me plenty of bodies dragon goes to their field which is fantastic and i get to flip up and nuke everything the flip of the dragon nuke the field the amazon field so it doesn't matter i get the dragon back and i just have a ton of bodies to turn into link fodder now one cool play here is boral guard dragon what boral guard dragon does is it flips up their monsters, but also you can send a card in your spell traffickers under the grave to summon a monster that was destroyed this turn. And because a light fiend was destroyed, I could steal a light fiend, and then I'd be able to get into the fiends with cards. I'm thinking here, what's the best way of killing or cleaning up the field and setting up interruptions? Because I can win the grind game here. I just need to not fumble. Now, I am low on light points, so I have to make sure I just don't die, leave myself too exposed, and don't lose to the nightmare pain. But aside, I just started off with Boragard Dragon, and then I activate the birth in order to revive the Fenrir. They chain Lakrima here so they don't get it banished uh, off the Fenrir immediately. And then they get to trigger the, the Requiem again, then summon Lakrima, summon Engraver. Good old resource looping, that's pretty good. I summon the Fenrir here, and I don't really care about this. Then I send up the Birth, which does suck, but now I get to steal the Engraver. And it's not getting to the, my own stuff. Uh, I probably should have summoned Engraver here so I could pop the uh, U-Bell with its effect. This was a mistake, I think, on my end, because now I, I, have to, I can't really cleanly deal with this U-Bell. I have to kind of flip it up 
and then banish with Fenrir, which is not ideal. I probably could have banished the Nightmare Pain or the Alakrama. I have to link off the Cerberus here. Yeah, so now I get to shuffle back three cards. I make Desiree. I mean, this is still fine, but I feel like if I'd gone Engraver, I could have popped, I um, mean, like an IP board. I guess I don't have SP left in my deck. That's yeah, not great. I don't know. I feel like this could have been better. Um, let's think about it here, because I have I have a normal summon still, or I have Fairy in hand. I have Fairy in hand. I could have specialed, gone, thrown, get Master, Master Search, normal summon there. I had normal summoned, right? Either way, that's what I should have done, because this Fairy never gets used, and I... Could have used that level one, that fairy, with the Lacrima on fields to do the same Desiree play, but I would have had a throne uh, on board as a bounce. Okay, I, I messed up here. Yeah, yeah, I definitely could have had another interrupt. But either way, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure what the exact correct play is. But I do know for a fact that I could either end on the Mimical Room on top of this, or like clean up the fields a bit better, or I could have gone uh, this exact same board state, the Desiree, Boral Guard, Fenrir, plus having the throne. So yeah, Giant or Throne was better. I, I just missed out here. But anyway, it's still a fine spot. I get to clean up the field now, enter the battle phase. Uh, it's a banish. I have to. I realize I have to attack the U-Bell, banish the U-Bell, attack. Uh, and that will trigger Yama, which is going to prevent me from killing him. But there's nothing really impactful in his grave. Uh, if he gets back a U-Bell card, I just get to negate it with the Desiree. Uh, and the alternative is he gets back a Unchained Monster for a bit of a float. He gets the Desiree, and that one's already used its pop effect at this point, so it doesn't matter. He gets back Rage, so he does have the float ability. I get to attack with Desiree, so he gets to add back another Phantom U Bell. Then I attack with 3000, uh, and I call it a turn here. But this is still a fine spot. I have the Boral Guard, Fenrir, and the Desiree. Now, the Boral Guard does actually manage to interrupt. Why is that? Because Boral Guard can change any monster to face up defense, uh, which actually means that if they try to kill me with a Cheese U Bell, I can turn to defense. And that's very important in this type of situation because that's essentially my opponent's win condition here when they're playing into these interrupts. They have the one draw. They don't have much of a graveyard. They have like no extra deck left. Shavar on a field. And yeah, uh, my opponent starts off with Nightmare Pain and let it go through because I don't really care about the, uh, the, the burn damage here, right? Like, again, I can still turn the guy to defense. I figure this is super chill. Uh, they pop back any beast and they grab the Spirit of Ubel. So they, this is going to be their only U-Bell in their hand or field. So if they want to fuse these two together for Phantom, then that's all they can really do. So that's fine. They do that to make the Phantom here. Uh, and I know that at any point I can also just Desiree to negate the, uh, the Nightmare Pain if they have something else. But they go Battle Phase. Uh, they try to attack. I just turn to Defense. They can attack. They do a little bit of damage. Field Spell over the, the Closed Moon is not enough. And then they have to pass there. Game's over. Boral Guard Dragon actually put in like a nice bit of work. The card is really um, and I even played a few games off camera with my friend and Boral Guard was like pretty good there too, stealing cards. So Loki, Boral Guard's kind of sick, um, I will say. But that is a long ass game one in the books. And we were able to pull it off with an okay hand um, and hopefully showed you guys the Mimigol's extension ability has significantly improved, specifically with fairy in existence. Um, and it also could have been better if I just played it out a little better. Um, and obviously it requires you to use different engines and to complement it, but that's what a lot of decks have to do, so no shame in that. Anyways, as we side, again, it's a board breaker deck. I'm putting in only multi charmies, expecting you know, a second against you, Bell. Uh, and then, given how at this point, I think it's like eight minutes on the clock, I also want to put in Imperms. I don't think it's good in this matchup, but if they try go for the uh, air leader send red resonator combo, I want to have the Imperm my deck to negate the air leader. I start off with a Perulia and get called by the grave, uh, and then no other hand trap. So I sit back and chill, watch my opponents. They go through the lines, and again, I'm going to sit and wait and watch. Now, again, because it's close to the time, I decide on the Cosmic Cyclones for very obvious reasons. There is a very possible chance I don't get a battle phase. So, yeah, I uh, don't want to pay life points unnecessarily, even if it is good in this matchup. It's not going to be, like, the best card. Now all I can do is watch my opponent play. They start with the Aerial Leader, and they're going to dump some SAR. So this gives me a very telling kind of idea what's in their hand. No, Knowing how your opponent combos and the lines of your opponent's combo decks is important for these situations. This gives me a very strong idea that there's zero engine in their hand, which may not be the most important thing, but it still is, right? So I should expect the other two cards to be good in, good uh, interactions, hand traps. And seeing that in the Beerus discard, it tells me they're at least another nib or better in their hand, because uh, that's how they evaluated the situation. The only other thing it could be is a brick they need to not discard, say an unchained trap, which I'll see momentarily if that's true. Uh, important that I'm keeping all these things in the back of my head as I'm watching them play their turn, because that's going to be important for, for how I break it. 
now we're gonna have to sit back and chill for a little bit as our opponent goes through the plays and we were we'll just pull our, our horses for a moment so here we see our opponent use shavara they set the escape so okay and then they set different dimension ground so at this point um obviously i think my opponent did make some mistakes they're nervous they're low on time they're trying to rush obviously one thing is when you try and rush it can it can very likely be to your detriment as when you rush you make mistakes and you have to think of ways to adapt so while i understand wanting to rush while it's close to time make sure you play at a pace that at least gives yourself a chance to win and not just completely losing the spot although i understand the pressure is not easy to deal with good practice though for in a tournament uh, and why you should be at least trying to time yourself if you're playing a simulated real tournament environment anyways yeah um i draw full loss return drop it because why not uh if they summon from the extra deck with rage or if they summon from the deck with spirits then that's cool uh i get the terraforming for planets again cash cards great into this board i get ash here that's fine it turns on my thrust now with two uh phantom u battles it's not actually good to steal phantom but what i can do is steal the unchained yama now because i know there's escape face down that will turn off the yama and because now they can't trigger the escape to pop a card they also can't revive rage and the only thing they have left right now is the ddg which banishes their cards i don't care about that and then the phantom so i'm in a pretty good spot uh, i get dragon they don't negate this which is probably a mistake but now i get to go into maker uh, and this will get me more bodies in play to link summon as well as to try to trigger their effects they get the slime so i get cerberus i get to flip it up uh and yeah escape cannot try to get set cards so i get the slime back special from deck and now i can get the mimigul master search again and you can see here i'm developing a huge body count and uh which can be used for link fodder for Smith cards for speed little knights for relinquished anima for giant mimigools from thrones because here i don't have to special summon for the deck mimigul throne i could just bounce two cards um but before i have a chance to even think about what i want, what I want my play to be um which probably actually wouldn't be the fiendsmith cards i know there's a ddg there i was trying to think what's going on in my head at the time but i was obviously trying to be fast as well and then before i have a chance to do anything time is called now uh because it's zero zero i win the match uh i won game one though this is a game i feel like i very confidently win from this position their interruption points are extremely limited i just have to be careful not to pop their card so that rage comes back and then screws me i need to make sure i'm safe from that um before that happens yeah that's kind of the things that are going through my head uh, i think what i want to do is probably like anima sp uh, potentially even just sp the rage uh, and that'll force out all you bell cards uh, and i think that would leave me in the best position and then i'd still have the two level ones left over and i can make or i can make it no, i wouldn't make the fiends with cards i can go throne and bounce two after it depends how they interact with phantom i guess i also don't remember what's in my hand truthfully but yeah i mean no need to speculate any further we got to see here how mimigul can play through a field uh rather intelligibly even with average hands you know double cash cards and then probably getting called by drawing full loss for turn there and i was still very confident now obviously things could on differently if plays went uh, a different way no point dwelling on that i think mimigul definitely kind of proved their own here 1-0 three rounds to go let's win with mimigul's all right, so round number two, I win the die roll. I open up my five card hands and I look and I'm like, damn, I have zero Mimigul cards. So I guess I'm not playing Mimigul this game. Um, I, I special unicorn, I opened up the birth as well. So I have to tribute my one engraver, uh, which is really shit. But obviously, I mean, it's still end, not the end of the world. I get to then use the Requiem special summon from the deck. Uh, get the Lacrima, nothing to send again. But I can still go equip the Requiem, make the Caesar. Or make the necro equip and then revive engraver make caesar now if i had something to descend here with the lacrima then i'd have better follow-up as well but obviously at that point i would also be playing more uh like literaries and stuff and i would play like a proper engine so drawing the engraver would have been better in, in general but I mean, this is still fine caesar unicorn not being great and, and my hand i have a drop in hand as well because i want my going second cards to be still playable going first and i have to hope that this is this is enough uh, caesar is a very good card so we'll see when normal summons a buzzsaw shark use the effect special from deck and i'm like nope negate that instantly i put the follow-up in grave and here's moment of truth if there's talents or not there's not so i draw for turn see a wraith soft i'm like okay that's kind of cool that gets me fenrir uh i get ash i'm like okay uh next i get to revive the engraver and i'm like this is just game right if i have a normal summon so i just normal summon my one mimigul that i drew here i should have a mimigul i guess it just wasn't a playable one uh and oh no sorry i i just linked someone a little more because why not i had to see what was game i get mourner here i feel like it was game if i just attack normal something to attack with the graver i don't know why i did it maybe i forgot the field spell boost from wraith soth i probably did that was stupid of me uh anyways they get i get mourner on lacrima and then it gets 
nothing here. I make Desi Rain's game, but it's stupid. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, but this is just game here. I attack. Uh, I should look to the extra deck first unicorn on the mourners. I'm, I'm uh, honestly not sure why I did either. I figured I would do when I attack, but obviously they just concede when I attack. So that was that was stupid. That was a very obviously winning game state for me. I had no reason to try and wait. Anyways, uh, going to my side deck. Things I'm expecting from a shark deck are to be toaded into oblivion. So I'm siding out cards I feel like are bad at the toad. Uh, Cosmic Cyclone is not great, although I guess I should have expected the Virtue stream. Uh, and then putting the Moltrimes is pretty good. Uh, and then I just side out on cards that I have a lot of copies of, so Redundancy doesn't really plague me. Uh, Mimical Fury is a card I think is fine to cut down to one post side, as well as the Prosperity, which I think is already just a mech card to have in my deck anyways, but I play. One thing I should have known is I should have taken out the Fiends with cards post side, and it'll come up here, because I know they can turn my cards into waters, at which point I cannot go into Requiem which sucks. So yeah, obviously I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't do that. Anyways, Ready Fusion comes down here and I have Fulos and it walks, which is fantastic. And Ready Fusion is such a brutal card to get Fulos as well, right? Because if you want to go Bahamut Toad, that's three draws. Opponent hits the tank here for a second. What's the best way to go through this? Uh, surfacing big draws, now grabs Abyss Shark. Fantastic extender for the deck. And the deck really is not bad right now. So if you guys want to see me build a shark deck of my own and bring to locals, let me know because this deck is actually quite playable. Um, not bad at all. So yeah, let me know if that's something that, uh, is up your alley. And, uh, I can very easily bring it to local. As your Bahamut Shark, Bahamut Shark comes down and I get to draw another card. And at this point, look at my hand. And my hand is just so crazy good. Like, there's like no way I lose because I, I have all my broken extenders. Uh, and I draw another card. I think the Virtue Stream here, Dragon. What it's going to do is let them search for the Virtue Stream, which if you're not familiar with Icarus Attack, uh, and then has their graveyard effect. They can banish it from the grave to make... A card I control water and here they kind of misread the virtue dragon they thought I let them copy the effect of an XYZ that's the move the materials around so they can move the, the, the material from shark to the virtue uh, they thought they could use Bahamut shark again that way no but it's fine uh, we rewind a bit not a big deal then we press forward there's some exit armor fortress at this point they're committing into the molt charmy confidently they get access to both exit armor trap and spell uh, both cards relatively low impacts. It's going to be a suck up with the armor lancer as well. Some discards. It's like fake advantage. It may look like it's a, a neutral game here, but don't kid yourself. This cards aren't great. Full armor lance here. I'm not really sure the purpose of this card too much. It's not great. It protects from destruction, I guess, a bit, which is fine, but not a brilliant card. Off of this, however, I do draw Perilia. I debate if I want to use it or not, uh, and I decide nah because I maybe I can change to something. I, I for some reason I thought I could change to a bit shark, but I realize it's uh, inherent. It's not an effect that reveals. Uh, so here I'm checking and I see, okay, wait, cannot chain Perilia to this. Um, unless I misread it, that's always possible, I guess, but no. Uh, so opponent will get to search their deck here. Now resolution, they add Exeter Mora, I chain Perilia. So they summon the Remora, I'll get a draw. They summon Armor Lancer on top, so now it comes clear the play is the play is a Remora play. They have to for Remora and I get another draw. Um, this is where Fubalos can feel a bit broken. Like, this is not... <laughs> this is not okay. Um, Stealth Kraken comes out, which will be a pop as well as to make all my guys water. I gotta draw again. And then I hit with Talents Look in my hand. And uh, they can choose from whatever. And the only card that really matters that the one of is the Droplet. He's about to take the thrust there, and then I'm like, I show him there's, there's two. So it does nothing. They hit the one Droplet. Uh, they set some cards. And because they have enough cards in their field, I don't have to shuffle back anything either. You may forget that there is the effect of the Charmies to shuffle back in the end phase if there's too many cards in your hand. But yeah, here, unless I have 11 cards, I'm fine. So I have 10, I'm chilling. Draw to 11 in hand. Like, this is so crazy, man. Uh, now, because my opponent didn't go Toad, my Kabai does nothing here, which is kind of cool. Um, I kept in Kabai, very much expected to get totally awesome. But, I mean, I'm still fine. I summon Fenrir, and it walks. So I'm like, cool. Uh, let's just search Unicorn. Uh, these cards work so broken with Droplet, because I can Droplet the field as well as and summon the Unicorn afterwards. However, the Talents hit my Droplet, so that's not actually going to be something that happens. Now, again, looking here, what's the best way to break the field? Four, seven interaction points. Um, and aside, similar to the last game, I'm summon the one master that I drew and try and start playing this way. Something I think that I don't really incorporate enough, or I didn't incorporate enough, was using Slime as summon in the field when my opponent controlled her monsters, and then using Fairy because I control Mimic Rule. It's like a way of just summoning bodies, like level one bodies, not uh, committing a normal summon or anything that's like a hard one per turn, which I guess the normal summons are. Uh, drop the discard to the trap, the card I didn't know. Uh, so now the other back row is the Icarus attack and I lose all my cards. I'm like, okay, last thing is the uh, Icarus attack. Let's just talent break the field. This will steal the Lancer as well because now I can't suck up anything. Opponent is kind of just boned here. Uh, I pop and I'm not sure what to steal because they already popped with the Kragen. I grab the La Virtue Dragon because I'm not sure what they're going to rank up with uh, from the Trap and Grave. I'm not even sure what I can rank up to. I probably should have read it 
if we, if we can make some like another Kragen or whatever. Um, but here I forget that there is still going to be a Kragen that makes my guys water. But it's important because when I'm an idiot here, I'm trying to make the beans with cards in a second. I can't do it. Uh, although my opponent makes it water a second time with the trap and grave. Another reason why the play was terrible, but it, it wasn't smart. I, I played this bad. Uh, Maker summons the dragon here. I get to add to hand. I add the, the room. Uh, so now I have the disruption as well. And then I figure, okay, let's uh, see if I get ash or whatever. Let's just make the, uh, the goddess. Again, not a good play. I want to hammer that down. I'm aware this is a misplay. I realized it in the, in the immediate after I did this. Yeah, I summon my close sky or whatever it's called. And uh, I've, I've pronounced this card so many different... I've called this card so many different names. I don't, I don't know what it is. Anyways, yeah, they uh, change it to water here. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm an idiot. Um, they, they control more monsters than me. So I can just summon the Mimical Slime here. Uh, and then I can summon the Fairy and then make a rank one. So I have a, still a game plan left. Uh, and then I go Throne. And I figure, okay, I have Kawai still for the last... If there's a hand trap on their hand. So I'm still like just big chilling. The Fairy, summon the Fairy. And you can see directly here how the new Mimigols are great extenders. I can hit with a nib. All right, not the end of the world. Um, they have like nothing left. They have my Mimigol face down. It stays there because Nibiru doesn't tribute set monsters. Uh, and at this point, I'm out of extenders. I have nothing left, um, which is fine. They have like nothing left. I have Call by in hand. I have Room in hand, as well as I can give them a bunch of Mimigols, which will stop them from normal summoning. Like here, let me give you the Archfiend. So you want to flip it up before you normal summon, you have to discard and draw. So they're essentially playing with a one card hand. Uh, yeah, they, this should just really be impossible for them to play through. Um, and I think all they can do is just attack with the Nibiru. And yeah, my Nibiru is gone, but that is okay. They set a card face down, and now I have full freedom to kind of uh, do what I want. I could room in the end phase, but I decide that, no, 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 I'm just saving this. Uh, I set it out to one, and then as well, I want to summon Unicorn, because Unicorn Fenrir is just like super OP in simplified game states. It doesn't matter anymore. And now I have to just go about actually killing him. I'm up game one. This is now an unlosable spot for me. I think in this turn, I did make an illegal play by mistake. I, uh, I forgot that I couldn't uh, use both throne effects in the same turn. Oh, this is also a game state that's like unlosable from here. Um, I get to just draw. I'm at five in hand. This is like 12 cards to one. I have all my cards still. Uh, I can talent steal as well. Birth by Fenrir. So I think, yeah, I think I illegally use my effect of, of uh, throne, but look at my field. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> summon the throne, the, the master out, master search. Uh, I think I decide I don't even care about it. I just attach, bounce, and attack. But yeah, I, I can't do this. You cannot use both effects the same turn. The, this game, it did not matter. Um, but still, not advocating for illegal play. Uh, that was a mistake. Anyways, Mimigul, very convincing 2-0 there. I know Fuwas did a lot of the heavy lifting in game one. Mimigul's did nothing, but Yu-Gi-Oh, man. I don't know. You play good cards and you're in good decks. Like, you, Snake Eye also wins with Fuwas alone sometimes. Anyways, 2-0. Two more rounds to go. Round three, up against my friend Victor. I know he's on tier, 60 card deck. Uh, Victor always plays a lot of the decks that I like to bring. So I know he's playing one of the tier decks that I've shown on this channel already. And uh, look at my hand. My hand is okay. One thing to note is I had only one Mimigul card, only one engine piece. Uh, I had I had room, so I had something if I got stopped here. But uh, I know he has no hand trap, so I can kind of just uh, go free anyways. I get to do the one card like combo here, uh, reveal two. They hit the slime, so I summon the uh, Archfiend, which is the best case scenario. Special summon out, special from deck again. I'm not sure what the best card to summon is here because the, the value off this now is uh, a lot less. Uh, I figure Fairy is fine to just get out of the deck because it's not a great draw later on. I have four level ones, which I can turn into Fiends with cards or I can turn into Mimigul cards. I figure here I want to get uh, Throne because Throne will get me Master. Master will give them a card. I want to give them a card because I have Thrust. Now with the Thrust in my hand, I can then look at their hand with the Talents and then construct the rest of my game plan knowledge is everything in Yu-Gi-Oh and part of why I like this deck is the ability to rip their hand uh with talents and their deck extra deck with unicorn um so I didn't draw the cash cards here but I give them the archer fiends then because I gave them the card I get the talents let's see what I'm dealing with I see two thrusts in their hand so the most important thing is I need to end on a desi ray now to make sure I don't get grassed and then field spell tier cash is very manageable so I'm just thinking over my options here like do I ever hit the field spell over the Mercedes and then I don't know Mercedes here is for sure the card to go um and I can save the throne bounce for the planet I can't flip up the, the Archfiend without them discarding a card, which is fine. And then, yeah. So I was a little apprehensive here with giving them the Archfiend because if they had a lot of graveyard effects, then they could discard and draw. So I would have had to be careful. They don't draw. I would draw. But they would discard a good card in Grave. Um, seeing they had no good graveyard effects, though, didn't feel kind of good. Now I'm going to, instead of prioritizing IP or the Giant Mimic Ghoul, I'm just going to get access to Desiree. Now, uh, because I drew the room already, I was super comfortable doing this as well. I'm still going to have the, the Trap card. And yeah, this is just uh, everything I needed to be here. Summon the Dean Smith Desiree out, equip it. So I have the bounce, I have the negate, I have the room as well. 
Uh, and I am chilling. I also had a drop into my hand, so uh, negates, negates, bounce, book. You also have the flip ups. Uh, they can't normal summon right now. And yeah, I mean, I know it's double thrust, so there's also one dead card in the hand at the very least. Very comfortable position for me. Victor starts off with a Pearl of Rhino, and as I as I kind of mapped out, I will use my bounce on that. So now uh, they don't get to do any of the broken stuff there. The card is very, very good. I discard the tier cash and draw. This kind of tells me they didn't draw any graveyard effects. They middle two cards. Necrom's there. Necrom is a good card, but it's not going to be enough. It's special from deck now, and I'm happy to book this as well as and give them a dragon. Now, because I have two booked monsters in the field after this, they also cannot normal summon. So if they drew, say, a Rhino Heart Return, then that's not going to be an option for them anymore. And um, as well, at any point, I can now use Master to flip up the card and nuke the field. So, yeah. Uh, still have the nuke, still have the Desiree up for the, the thrust, which I will hold for the uh, for the thrust and grass. But yeah, nothing comes down, and concession. Moving on to game number two. So against here, uh, I'm setting in the Mulch Armies and uh, kind of chilling with that. So game number two starts, and my opponent normal summons Lurie, makes the Requiem, uh, and then a chain full lost the Requiem. Now you can argue, why didn't I do this before to get the draw on the Requiem, but I figure they're going to stop anyways. And I, my hand's not good at this point, actually. Like you can see my hand is like Birth, Wraith, Soth, Droplet. I need Engine. So I'm looking to draw Engine here. I draw another Mulch Army Jupiter Not oh, great. Uh, and this is where stopping under the Mulch Army can be very good. Just play a little bit more, but Tyr can actually play decently under the Mulch Army where they can do stuff that's not going to give me a bunch of draws and still develop a couple interruptions. Uh, Foolish Goods is obviously very good at doing that because Planet is a brilliant card in this position uh, as well as can help develop their, their board state a bit. Sorry, Bridge will get the Horse Field Spell and then they get to add Cortis as well. Then they add Imseti with the Field Spell. Uh, they get to discard with the Imseti, get the King Sark out and then draw a card looking for any bit of more interruption. The horse cards can be annoying to deal with for most decks. Uh, I think Mimigul is not really an exception because you can't use stuff to clear it that easily. Does Mimigul drag and he flip it up on their field still get nuked by King Sark? I don't know. I'd have to uh, see, I guess. Uh, if King Sark's only the opponent's card, Mimigul uh, Dragon would still nuke his own horse monster. So we'll see. They summon Seer Cash here and they hit a trap card or hit the Scream to search a trap card, which is crazy. And Trivikarma can get another trap card. So now where this game state looks uh, pretty comfortable for me, I'm now dealing with uh, two tier traps tier cash didn't give me one draw though off of perilia so now i have a sum engine but yeah this is still looking kind of gross at this point they have the a bit of protection from the horse monster two tier, tier trap cards and they set a third card i start off with the cash card which is fine it goes through and i grab the fenrir thinking, okay this is fine summon it and like most cash cards used to do it gets booked of moon i look at the grave see if they have ability to fuse just in case i want to chain drop it here um because i also have the birth i'm happy to drop with this Though I don't really care what they send, I feel like, and uh, I'd rather beat their Selic. So if I normal summon like Mimigul Master here, um, I want to chain drop it to the Selic and send both, and then birth. So I hold the droplet here. Uh, I sent your cash at the blind mill too, but we'll see what happens. Um, obviously this could go bad, but 60 card deck. Even if that mill follow up, it's fine. I hit Selic Kel though, which is crazy because now they get another tier cash as well. Uh, and the, the shuffle ruins my birth. So obviously like, yep. Um, pretty, pretty bad for me. Now I go terraforming and, uh, get the dungeon to access the engine. Sorry, I don't know why I said I'm going to Mimical Master. I'm going to go Mimical Dragon off this. I got Cosmic anyways, and I don't know. Like, let's just go next game. This is, uh, this has now left my ability to break entirely. So game number three. Look at my hand, game number three, and it is just, once again, zero Mimical cards. And I really wish I had Mimical Room in this hand because you'll see in a second, but, uh, I do D Barrier. Uh, double draw or double drop a cosmic and the unicorn. So I get the birth. I'm like I lose to back removal anyways. I'll just set all the cards besides droplet. Have a bit of a bluff for hand traps. Plus I can cosmic pull a rhino, which is really important. Or king sark, both really big cosmic cyclone hits. Uh, I want to set call by for obvious reasons. And then barrier is mandatory to set. So yeah. Here Victor goes battle phase, and I'm like, what the fuck? Siding evenly matched against Mimigul is crazy, by the way, because my deck gives you cards. Like that should never work. I just didn't draw a Mimigul card, and I, I, I got a bit tilted. I got evenly matched here, and I'm like, I'm probably already losing. But like, God damn it! It's not like my ability to grind is like heavily hit. I keep the unicorn for obvious reasons. I barrier fusion, and then he goes grass. I'm like, okay. So this is how we uh, don't win locals. <laughs> it's brick evenly grass. That's how. Uh, and I, I yeah, like <laughs> this is this is this is over. 
um, you can watch the uh, chaos unfold as I try with every little being in my heart, every little, every little ounce of passion I have. But no, this doesn't matter. Uh, look at all those effects at the grave. There's follow up in there. There's more mills. Like, oh my god, it wasn't even left arm either. She's a full hand. He can set cards to my follow up. I still don't have engine either, by the way. This unicorn has no targets left. I play one birth. <laughs> There's a bridge in the grave. I'm I'm just uber fucked, right? Like, um, so they add tier cash and they add Sulik. Uh, I get tripped with their X deck and I figure, okay, no fusion, so I hit something else. I hit the Requiem, that way they can't uh, can't use Engraver to send. Um, they still can if they use Sequence effect to attach, but people, because that's an un unintuitive player, not like a common play, I have to hope that my opponent or Victor doesn't know how to uh, how to do it here. And he doesn't, he ends up not doing it later, but he could have. Make Zombie Vampire here, uh, mill some cards. Uh, I get a very depressing mill fours. I'm pretty sure I hit like four cards that I would have loved to have in my start of turn. That probably would have won me the game on the spot. Cause like, I would have had Unicorn Barrier plus Engine. Oh man, that would have been so good. Uh, Lacrim would have been okay, but yeah, and then the two makers in a dungeon. I'm like, God damn, why can't I see this earlier? And before you guys like say, oh, I should have played more Engine in my deck, I'm playing like max engine besides master and i don't think or i don't think you want to play multiple with what masters the card is not like that good in normal summon. you can't use it later comboing by summoning fairy from the hand and normal summoning level one is not good so um playing more fairies and more slimes and more armors for that reason bad i stand by my decision it just didn't work out i'm um, obviously here i'm getting the shit beat out of me that scream there is also going to apply pressure because now he mills three more in my turn eventually he's going to hit all the shufflers and all the the, uh, the blackout laughs there's the thing follow up with everything. There's IP, there's a tier cash. Like, oh God, this is so messed up. You could have ended up this and popped my card probably, but yeah, whatever. I drop a turn, then we'll dragon. Yay, if only it wasn't four cards too late. Uh, use the effect here, it hit with a Sulek, and um, yeah, yeah, look, I'll play it properly. And I get to get the IP. So I have like a shred of hope, but no, not really. I'm playing to the shufflers. Um, under, uh, with the plan on the field and with like no cards, uh, as well as he can mill six with the scream and the tear cash. Like it's, it's, it's so over, uh, or as the kids would say, it's so Jover. I grab uh slime archivine here, hoping he hits the slime and then I flip it up and then some cool stuff hits the archivine. I'm like, great. I special from hand and I'm like, what do I do now? Means with the cards do not work. He mills three cards, chains a shuffler, uh, put back his tears also trigger the pop and i'm just gonna get absolutely brutalized uh the scream mills a tear monster clyde hurts the field and uh and just like that i mean like i was already dead but this just cements it i have nothing left pop shuffle God. the dream of winning locals dies here on the back of a brick unfortunate it's okay one round left let's finish locals x1 all right so round number four and i lose the roll and uh this time it seems we're up against fire game so We've gotten quite a varied local experience. We played versus Yubel round one, round two, Sharks, probably the least meta of all the decks, round three, Tier, and round four, Fire King, so pretty good. Opponent leads off with Bonfire, add Poplar, uh, one of the strongest players in the deck, in my opinion, because it really doesn't eliminate any ability for them to keep extending. Um, this is one of my favorite things to do in the deck because we can still normal summon Olkanix or Oak later, or Ponix even. Hand trapping becomes incredibly hard. Normal Olkanix afterwards, so broken. Fire King's so good. And I have no hand traps, so I'm just going to chill and watch. Now, again, I'm trying to think how to break the field, keep track of what's going to his hand, because uh depends what he searches. Sanctuary for Island here, okay? So I can't rule out Skyburn or anything in his hand. He added uh, Skyburn, then it would give me some information as well. Then he goes the effects of Island uh, and pops the Ilkinix. I guess to add from deck to hand any, uh, any of his dudes. And he adds Kieran. That tells me Grunix in hand, although obviously it doesn't really matter because... I see it in a literal second. Uh, I think it's special from deck now. Then they can send our Vata, Vata Revive. And you have the nice setup of four bodies in the field uh, with extremely little commitment here. I, I do think my opponent makes a mistake here. I don't really remember what happened. I just know they end on no fires in their hand for Kieran. So they have to rely on Kieran popping on the board, which is a mistake because it leaves you vulnerable to board breakers. Something this deck should never have a problem with. Okay, I know what he does actually. He makes uh, rank eight here with the, these two lights. And I know this is a Mimigo video, but I'll go into Fire King. Like, I'll talk about Fire King here because the deck that I play a lot of Master on TCG, I'm pretty well versed with. Now, the reason to play Photon Lord is for Snake Eye combos, not Fire King combos. Because Fire King combos, if I nib, I nib you here, assuming there's no Poplar. If there's original in hand, you can play through nib anyways. So I can't use the nib until after you use original. Um, and given that being the case, if I go Princess here, 
But if you go Princess here with the three Fire King monsters, and I nib there, then original still beats me, and the nib doesn't accomplish enough. The Karen's already in hand. Uh, you can still end on IP and shenanigans, still end on Princess and Grave, and the nib's not accomplishing anything. So yeah, you don't need to go focus on here. But when you go for the Snake Eyes start, and you don't you don't open any Fire King cards, you get to a position where you have like this similar board state with a Flame Bridge on field. And if you make the princess not using the flame bridge and then you get nibbed there the flame bridge can revive too and this is assuming you don't have any extenders uh even if you play the second princess all the princess can do is revive make whale and pass you instead of making the princess there you go photon lord that way you can link off for sunlight wolf with the flame bridge and then go into princess uh and then you're safe from nib so that's when you go photon lord or you go into when you're playing into fields in this position you don't want to go photon lord because you actually don't mind getting nibs in these spots you only mind getting nibbed after you've committed the snake eye cards uh, also, you don't mind getting nipped after you've set up Kieran plus a fire in the hand, because then at least you have Princess in the grave as well. You have many layers of disruption, even through nib. And at that point, I'll need nib plus Imperm. Um, so the play that I would have gone here is um, Sunlight Wolf, Anima, add back a fire so the Kieran is live, then revive the Arvada with Princess, and then go original, send this off, get Oak, and then go into uh, Amblo Whale IP. Um, and that would be the best play. Uh, so yes, they make Photon Lord here, um, which is fine. And then followed up with original. So yeah, I mean, this is like safe from Nib, right? Um, this still does lose to Nib Imperm the same way the other play would too lose. Oh, I wouldn't say lose because you don't really lose to Nib Imperm. And then Oak Revive. Uh, and they have plenty of bodies here. Like they have an excess of bodies. They don't need to be super aggro uh, with getting max value here. Like the Flame Bridge here. Um, then they can go into Sunlight Wolf for IP. The Flame Bridge in this deck doesn't need to stay on the field that much. So it's fine. Uh, links off for IP here. So I think this could have been a Sunlight Wolf. Let me see how many monsters they had here. If you go Sunlight Wolf, add back, then go Princess, uh, Revive. Princess with these two, then Revive, make Whale, and go IP Pass. That would have worked as well, right? You don't care about the float that much. You just need to make sure that you have a fire in hand for Kieran. It's a very important thing for this deck. What do you do with the extra bodies? I don't recall. I think he may just end on... I don't remember exactly. Revives Arvada. Links off these two for Amblo Whale. And then... I know these, these two weren't, weren't there at the end. Links them off for... Oh, Silo Hat Rabbit. Okay. That's what it was, right? Still Hat Rabbit's in their deck. Um, so maybe this has changed what the end board's supposed to be like, but I still think the most important thing here to play on Breakers is to make sure you have the Fires. Perhaps if you did the other play where you Princess version instead of Photon Lord, you'd have enough bodies for this still. You just wouldn't have this up. Uh, either way, that's my TED Talk with, with Fire King. I'm sorry for wasting so much of the video on this. Let's get back to Mimic Rules. So to start off the turn, my hand is Cosmic Talents, which is a great way to, to play because uh, you can Cosmic the Island, and then talents the whatever's left, and you could you could deal with a lot still. However, with the rabbit there, uh, it means it's another form of interruption. It's going to be annoying. It rolls an unknown backer, which could be Skyburn. I have no indication of what it is. I assume no as a mean the cards no wanted, so it's not a bluff in that regard. It could be another bonfire if it's a bluff. And um, that's really the only bluff I think it could be. But because I know there's an, there's uh, the the rabbit here, I have two dungeons in hand, so I figure, okay, what if I lead dungeon? There's a good chance you'll see the free value. Use the the Azrun to summon to pop, which will make this vulnerable to. Uh, Cosmic Cyclone, because now I can bot blow up all these, as well as I can then Talents because they use an effect. And if I Talents this, it, it keeps the Grunix locked under this, which is a problem. And then if they use the effect to revive, I can negate it by detaching the old Grunix. They just lose. So now I have a very robust win condition here. Now it will depend on the last back row, but uh, we'll see. Back to the dungeon, and as predicted, the Azrune statue comes out. I get to blow up the my, my field spell, which I'm very okay with. I have another copy. Then I want to Talents and steal this Photon Lord. Now here he thinks I'm trying to steal all the Amla Whale. Now, truthfully, I expect them to be another fire in their hand. Because that's what I would have done. I would have destroyed another fire because there's so many opportunities to do so. Um, so I wasn't going to steal the whale. But um, this tells me the last card in their hand is not a fire, which is important. It means it has to be a hand trap or some level of follow-up. The whale now will get the floats and I can negate this, uh, which is super convenient. Target the IP. Let's keep this off. Uh, and I'm going to make sure the Grunix doesn't get used. And chain Imperm. And I'm like, okay, now let's chain Cosmic Cyclone so nothing gets to go anything here. Uh, now this will trigger the Kieran effect survive the Arvada, and it will trigger the Whale to pop as well. So the Fulton Lord that I'm stealing is going to be gone, and they will get their Grunix back. But that's fine. This leaves them with one unknown in hand, which I do expect to be a hand trap or follow up, um, but most likely to be a hand trap. So they get to use Kieran to revive. They bring back the Arvata. They get to pop, uh, and I'm pretty sure that based on this, that this Arvada is dead. It can't actually negate anything. So I'm not going to be playing around the Arvada negate. Now the card in hand is still something I have to be careful of, so proceed with caution, as well as there's a Princess in Grave. Now the Grunix in Grave does kind of matter because it still comes back, uh, and then what Avada will trigger revive Kieran. What that means is with the Kieran and, and Grunix in field, those two can make a rank eight on my turn with the Sanctuary up, so I have to be 
still conscious of that being a play. They still have two layers of interruptions, but both require me to provoke it. So if I can kind of play around it and, and make hard scenarios for that to arise, that's what I want to do. So yeah. So here I activate Dungeon and I add two hand Mimigul Archfiend. That way I can use a Mimigul Maker next. Uh, and then I already have the Archfiend in hand, so I can add two cards that get a good flip effect triggered and then flip that way. And just generate enough bodies that this uh, Princess won't matter. And then once the rank eight's live, I can make a play that doesn't matter too much into it. But then I get met with a draw on resolution. And I'm like, fuck. I just can't do anything now. I figure, all right, let me give them Archfiend because they can't Princess this. And they can't Normal Summon either because of the dungeon. If they flip it up, then I, they discard and draw. If they want to go like original Search Snake Eye Ash because that's not in their, uh, not been used so far. Then they can, uh, they have to discard the card they uh, drew, which is okay. Now I'm still dead if they play it properly because what they do is they can just go, uh, do that, discard the card they drew, and if I, I have no interrupts, uh, and I'm not going to draw into any, I don't play any. They they shuffle back the, the Flame Burge, I think they need to shuffle back. And normally Ash, link and then go Effective Ash, send off the Ash plus the uh, the Sanctuary for Flame Burge, and they can link the two away for anything, revive two, and then I should be dead um, with Zelantis in theory, because then Oak revives, and then go Zelantis, yeah, and I'll have the Archfiend on field, so then they get to just nuke it and I die. So uh, uh, Gruning's triggers, blah, 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 dead. So I'm still dead. It requires them to play properly, so I'm going to let them do it because it's not a super simple line. And yeah, uh, summon the Archfiend to their field, set a bluff, I think I did, and call it a turn. Draws for turn and sends my card to the grave. I'm like, you can't tribute summon. There's a dungeon in the field. And then it's Witch. And I'm like, oh. Um, and yeah, that, that's obviously like really bad news. So a deception. And I want to see if they can uh, kill me here properly because it's not super simple. With a lot of their fire cards gone, they still get the Asmina negate out, and maybe I can top deck out of this because uh, the dungeon is follow up as well as I have the Mimical Maker face down still, and they don't know my last card hand is dead and being a dead engraver. Uh, as well as I draw a unicorn, it's not that dead, although I guess Princess exists. Now they're just going to go through the lines. They uh, Mu Arcialago, uh, wanted shuffle back, make the the Sylvia negates, and they get the the draw card. They get to search, they get the Poplar out, and yeah, here's the problem with getting the Poplar back. It seems like it's an extra body, but uh, they don't actually have a link really in their deck, so they can't do much. My, the Charmers don't do anything versus me here. My deck's all Earth. So, um, no Veensmith to make either. So, that, yeah, this kind of goes nowhere. They draw, and um, they just attack. Maybe it's two, the SP banish the dungeon, and uh, it's over to me. I draw for turn uh, a third dungeon, so I'm like, all right, that's not the worst in the world, I guess. Uh, I use the effect, get hit with Ash, and I'm like, well, I guess that's what the Drew wanted. And like in reality, I'm losing this game probably either way, but that was that was like just like damn. Lost the draw and Lockbird. Very depressing. But yeah, this is a lingering floodgate like Maxi into a field. Like it really hurts. I hate draw. God damn it. Uh now we move on to game number two. I start off with Prosperity for six. Um, and I don't need the engine here to play. I already had Maker. What I wanted here was cash tier cards. Because ripping apart the extra deck here is very good. Because uh, you can hit both Azamina cards and the Princess, both of which are meaningful. It is weak to draw, though, however. But I figure I'm weak to draw either way. However, I have Droplet and Room if I do get drawled, so I'm not, like, dead to rights. There's draw. So I'm like, whatever. I hit the Unicorn at least. So I set the two. At least it's not the Planet here, because Planet would have been weak to draw as well. Uh, and I have a bit of follow-up. Um, here, though, my opponent did just brick. So uh, they go set one and pass. And I have Maker in my hand still. I have Slime plus Fairy enough Extenders as well. Uh, unicorn can get searches as well. I'll lead with Maker here because I want to uh, play around Droll. Uh, I get Ash. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Let's look at their extra deck at the Princess because that's greatly going to hit their grind game ability, which with a lot of hand traps, I can't assume I'm going to be able to play. So I assume it's going to be a grind game. As well as, considering he bricks, I just don't want to play into a Nibiru. Um, and with the Memogol Room face down, I'm just Omega chilling. So I'm like, let's just uh, try play a grind game. A normal summon Slime. Then I special summon the Memogol Fairy. And I get Dominus Impulse. Which is crazy, because now, if you guys have never heard, Dominus Impulse hurts this deck a lot. And now if I give him a Mimigul and flip it up, uh, it doesn't activate, because he can't use Earth Effect. Um, and as crazy as that is, after playing this deck with his whole locals, it's not actually, like, the end of the world. Like, you're not completely reliant on flipping up effects. Like, you have enough extenders from your hand and good enough rank ones without needing your opponent's cards to be used, that you can still very much win these games. It's not over. Uh, but here I debate, do I want to extend with room past this point? And I'm like, no, I don't know if this the nib. Let's just, uh, let's just play a grind game, continue attacking. You can banish more cards. I'll have the, the birth up. Set two more and pass. And yeah, I mean, this is just over. So yeah. Normal summon dragon. Get to use dragon. Get hit here again. At the, another imperm or droplet or whatever. Yeah, droplet. Sending droplet, I think is what it was. And I'm like, okay. 
Um, <laughs> then I overlay for the Mimical Throne, special summon from the deck. I hit with Imperm, um, and I'm like, that's fine. Again, I don't have Planes of Inferior, so let's just attack. Uh, it, it, it doesn't matter. I rip the SP apart out of their deck. Um, and I have a very good idea. Their hand is just full nonsense, so I'm like just chilling. Although, obviously, like maybe there was a safe way to kill. Summons Witch, no other cards left. I have Unicorn, I have Room, I have so much. It's so, so over. Um, and remember, I can summon Master of the Room and then bounce a card with Throne as well. He sets Deception, which is funny because now I get to go hit, hit the, the Moo off of Unicorn. All this does is summon Sylvia. <laughs> it, it's so bad. Uh, it goes Battle Phase, anyways. And like, yeah, it's. Now it's time to go to game number three. Game number three starts off, and my opponent starts with Deception. Deception gets used tributing Ash Blossom, which either tells me they don't have many monsters in their hand, or they have other ways to beat the Molcharmy Fuelos, because otherwise this is an incredibly aggro pick. Um, this could be the greedy pick, as you can add it back with Sonic Wolf, but still, I don't think that's what happens. They activate the Azamina card, I chain Fuelos, that I go through. Okay, no cross out or call by. Let's chain the second Fuel Loss. If I had a second one, it'd be insane. But yeah, so a double Fuel Loss here. A chain Wanted here, which will let them get the Witch for extension. And I think if I were in their shoes, I probably would have got attributed the Witch for uh, Deception here. My Fuel Loss draws two Perilia, which is terrible. Um, and I think I'm thinking my hand is like now it's not that good. So if he passes here, I, I have a five card hand, and I show him my hand. You're not supposed to do this, but we're just having a good time. Original summon from deck will give me another draw, uh, which is fantastic. And ideally, this is where you want to send the original to uh, Brave, so you can uh, get the extra, or so you can add to hand instead of doing this one less card. But now they get to go Ash, add Ponix, which is pretty good. Uh, and I drew another another Moltrami off of the the draw from deck here. So um, I've gotten four draws, three which do nothing, which is terrible. So I'm still like neg one after all this, pretty much. Uh, I drew into five Moltrami's. Yep. <laughs> Uh, and Fire King can play decently from this point because now he gets to go Garunix, Garunix send Arvata, uh, and then Arvata revive, uh, and this sets up a Princess revive Arvata play, uh, which is pretty solid, right? Because this gives them several layers of interruption still. The Sylvia is also fine for obvious reasons. Um, I can't chain Perulia because these two Moltrami's a turn. Princess comes, I draw two cards. I do a second Talents and a second Dungeon. It's actually just crazy how bad my cards are. Um, I have like a nine card hand and maybe three of them are playable overall. And the worst part is I was siding out some of the multiples. I really didn't want to have redundancy when I'm drawing into my engine. I'm, I'm showing my friend here my hand. I'm like, what is this? Like, how am I still potentially losing this? Uh, Kieran gets activated here to pop the princess so that witch can then come down and set the Silvera from deck. So um, even though my opponent gave me a bunch of draws off Fuel Loss, uh, there's still going to be the Arvada, the princess, the Grunix and Grave, the Sylvia on field, and the Silvera set. So double Omni, effect negate princess, um, which is pretty good. Um, I think that maybe keeping the Sanctuary was better and then sending the Arvada was fine because Princess Revived Kieran is okay. Although I do get how it is a bit fragile. Uh, now they also get a one to draw to try to draw into a hand trap here, which is pretty uh, nasty. Uh, and they drew a card they can set. So pretty good start. Now uh, I immediately I'm going to want to Lightning Storm that to clear up the back row because uh, I know there's an Omni Negate there as well as it would trigger the Island out of Sanctuary. Now they do Negate with Silvera. They think I want to revive and I'm pretty sure they don't for very obvious reasons. It's not good into anything. Actually, dungeon, seeing if it would force an interrupt. Maybe there's a Cosmo Cyclone or anything face down. It eats the Sylvia negate, which probably is not worth negating, to be honest. But I'm like, okay, now my thrust is live. So I'm like, okay, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's get this. So I'm thinking here, what do I want to thrust for, right? At this point, my hand is like thrust, talents, a slime. I think that's it. So I'm wondering what the best way to deal with this is. So if one thing I can do, I think I was deciding, is if I can go summon the slime and he doesn't do anything, I can make anima. And if nothing happens there, I haven't normal summoned yet. Uh, I can make, I can talents, or I can make SP, uh, and then I can banish the Princess of Greenings and Grave, and try enter a grind game, and that's a decent chance of winning. The first thing I want to do is dust or hit the back row, just to make sure I'm not getting impulse or anything. There's an imp from face down, okay. Here's the field. Uh, now you can revive. I want him to use everything here. I want him to use Arvada and Kieran and Grunix. That way it comes easier to crack the field later. Uh, he holds the Grunix, which is pretty good. Um, clears my field, and that's fine. Uh, so I lose the dungeon, but it's okay. At this point here, I'm thinking, okay, there's a princess, there's a Vada. It's all I have to deal with. Um, but my hand is bad. I don't have engine. I really have, like, talents, and that's it. So I'm like, okay, let's reveal slime here. Make I make anima. And if he does nothing, thinking this is uh, where this is going nowhere, uh, I can normal summon, or I can talent steal. Make SP, banish the Grunix and Grave. And if he tries princessing, I can chain the SP targeting both the targets of princess. Princess will revive. 
and I can actually enter and win a grind game. However, on the Summon of Anima, I am met with a Princess, which is the right position here, uh, and it leaves me unable to uh, really capitalize on the situation. Right, I think Rune Expect activates Destroy from deck, destroys all Connect Specials from deck, and I chain the Ulosk, I'm like, okay, let's draw another card here, because uh, I really need to draw Engine, and I draw into Mimical Master, which is not the worst. I have a normal Summon here, and it gets Furious. That is two bodies. Um, that is fine, because my end at this point is two Talents, two more Molt Charmies, and uh, like, yeah, so it's just all dead. Uh, I'm thinking here if Talents steal the Arvada is good enough, then I can normal summon the Mimigul, um and play. But I sided out the Fiends with cards, so I figured they'd be kind of dead in this matchup, and I wouldn't get to this position that easily, like this simplified game state where I'd have bodies in field, because Arking sells in removal. I expect to not get this far. Uh, although if I had those and I have good use for my Link body, I'd be fine. I wish I played two Animas here, I guess. But yeah, so even though I can steal the Arvada and make Link 3, it doesn't actually do anything. I can go IP, SP, Banish, Karunix, and pass. Not good. So I'm thinking, like, what do I do here? And uh, it probably took me too long to decide, but I think I decide Talents draw. I need to draw into extension, whether it be Maker, um, Dragon, um, a, a Kashira card, or yeah, I remember to use Lightning Storm. So I'm looking for one of those, I guess, uh, which is a fair bit. A Talents draw two, and I draw Mimical Room plus Wraith Soft. Actually pretty good, because I have a bit of disruption if it gets to a grind game, and I get to get some bodies in field. Uh, I think for a second, then I'm like, let's grab Fenrir here in Super Simplified Game State. It deals with the Arvada really well. Uh, and then I get access to the Unicorn for next turn, as well as this gets linked off. I normal summon my Master, get to rip the... and he changes the effect. Now, he can destroy Princess of Garunix here. Whatever he doesn't destroy will get banished by the Fenrir, which is pretty nice. Destroys the Garunix, so my Fenrir will banish the Princess. And then I enter the battle phase, and I attack with the Fenrir. Uh, and because of the field spell, there is Fire and Earth on the field, so 2600 over Arvada, 800 points of damage. Uh, I set one, and call it a turn. Um, although I probably should have set a bunch just to play around top deck Skyburn is a mistake because my opponent does literally top, top, top deck Skyburn here. And yeah, they get to do Skyburn here and they pop the Fenrir and the Garunix like, to keep the, uh, the thing. They summon out the Garunix from this point, get a special summon from the grave. And I'm like, okay, let's just move a little room because otherwise I'm going to get it popped here anyways. And I get to book the Garunix face down, touch with my field to wall up. I'm in the dragon in defense mode. Uh, summon out the Garunix. They get to pop the dragon and uh attack but and this should be because it's earth and fire 2700 points of damage time is called 700 damage 800 damage you guys know which wins ironically the the cash tier fuels while actually being enough damage to win the game is uh is really funny so um it's enough although also my opponent probably could have just uh popped the uh the wraith soft and won we both probably took too much time goofing off talking about nonsense here i think i win this game in the long game so you can judge the the how this game went as you will, because um, none of I think we both kind of lost focus there at the end. <laughs> That's how locals went. The the showing there was pretty solid. You hopefully you saw how the the deck functioned, and you can see the new wave of support was very good. You have a actual game plan, and I was breaking fields. I could actually play decently, as well as when I went first, I could make very reasonable fields as well, which I guess I didn't do that often, but it's still very good. As well as, even if it seems insignificant, the meh extension effects of both Slime and Fairy do really push this deck's ability to incorporate the Fiends with Package, a package I think is still worth running in this deck even without Beatrice and AD Changer. As for any changes that makes the deck, honestly, I think I'm pretty happy with it, so uh, there's nothing I'd want to change. I think I wouldn't need more Mimical names. I don't think I need Charm or Fork. I think those cards are kind of unnecessary. If you want a more in-depth deck profile, again, check out Patreon and Space. It's the best way to support me as well as to get some bonus content. But that was Mimigol, and I'm super happy to have shown this off right around Halloween. It's a very cool deck, and I'm hoping that Konami doesn't stop with the second wave of support. They continue to give this deck a little bit more oomph because it's it's cool. It's a good deck, and I'd love to see if they do more with it. But if not, I hope the next archetype they do for TCGs uh, in Supreme Darkness, hypothetically, we don't know what it is yet, but... If they do one, I hope it'll be as well-designed, as unique, and cool as Mimicool. So, that's all for now, guys. Again, any decks you want to see in the future, comment down below. I'll see you all then.